Man, I'm in London, Brixton, Camden, sipping a cam with a spliff in the hand. London is busy, the city is tricky, the city is cold. We caught with a headache and I'm so poetic and life is a madness. London is pretty, the city is buzz, the city is bold. For 16 days, my wife and I traveled from London all the way down to Northern Italy and it was a absolute blast. I'm going to go city by city and share what we did with you guys, the things that we loved, and also some of the harsh realities of traveling abroad. I feel like um, a lot of people post all the glitz and glamour of traveling abroad, but there also are some hardships of traveling abroad. And I'm not saying it was a bad trip or anything like that, but there are some difficulties when it comes to traveling out of the country and stuff like that. And I want you guys to know exactly what to expect if you decide to go to any of these cities. And also, disclaimer, I am absolutely not a pro at this. This was our first time out of the country. We only got to spend a few amount of days in each city, so we don't know a whole ton about each city. This is just our experience, what we learned from it, and what we want to share with you guys. So just to briefly summarize our trip, we flew in from Phoenix, Arizona to London, and then the cities we visited were London, Paris, Zurich, Switzerland, Lucerne, Switzerland, Florence, Italy, and Rome at the end. And then we flew from Rome to Chicago and then back to home, Phoenix. And to get to all those cities, we just took a train. The trains were very helpful to get to the cities you needed to go to within those countries. And I'll probably make a whole separate video about um, transportation between cities, our flights and stuff like that, um, if you guys want, so you have information on all of that as well. This video is primarily going to be about London, and then I will make separate videos for the other cities as well, just so this video isn't an hour long or so. I'm mainly going to be breaking it down by five bullet points, transportation, food, shopping, things to see, and hospitality. And if there's anything else I think of, I will throw those in as well. But before I get into those, I just want to say London was actually shockingly our favorite city out of the entire trip. We absolutely loved it, everything about it, how easy it was to get around. We actually thought that Italy was going to be our favorite part of the trip, which we still loved, but shockingly London was like our favorite part of the trip, and I will explain why. So London was actually a great city for us to have our first abroad trip in because uh, everybody spoke English, so there was no language barrier, and so it was very easy to ask people questions, to get around, and stuff like that. So the transportation in London, I would give a 9.5 out of 10. It was so easy to get around, and there were so many methods of getting around. There was the underground tube, there were buses, there were Ubers, there were um, rental bikes and scooters, um, and sim simply, of course, just walking too for certain parts of the city. So it was just so easy to get where you needed to go. The first day of figuring out the underground tube was a little bit confusing for us because we don't live in a city where there's subways, so it wasn't super easy for us to like find which uh, bus to go to, I'm sorry, bus, uh, subway to go to, and so it was a little bit difficult, but once we like figured it out the first day, every other day was like a piece of cake. And it is so nice the way you pay. You literally just um, can use your Apple wallet or whatever smartphone that you have, your wallet on your phone. You tap the gate to get in. And then when you exit, you just tap it again to get out. But make sure that you are using the same credit card and same method the whole time. I did hear on a TikTok that like if you used uh, a different uh, card exiting as you did entering, then y you could get double paid and stuff like that. So like for me, I primarily used the Apple Pay. Um, I just put my credit card on my Apple wallet and I used that same credit card for every single tube ride, tube ride and I used the Apple Pay method the whole time. I never got the physical credit card out. So just my phone. It was so convenient because when we got in there, all you had to do was whip out your phone, pull out the wallet, tap it, you're good to go. I will say that you definitely don't need to Uber really at all in this city because of the underground and buses 
rental bikes, stuff like that. It's very easy to get around with those methods. Um, but the Uber just adds a certain convenience um, to where like you don't have to find a specific stop and walk to it and stuff like that. If you just like quickly like want to get somewhere with ease and not having to walk super far. We did Uber a couple times and it was so convenient. So not saying you will have to Uber at all, but if you want to just add just a little bit of convenience to your trip, um, you can have a little budget for Ubers as well. And thankfully in London, the Ubers were uh, very prominent. They also had a second app, I think it was called Bolt. Um, so you could use that as well if there were no Ubers. So it was pretty easy to uh, get one. We even took an Uber from the airport to the Airbnb in the first day. I will say though, and this was kind of a theme we found from the entire trip, was the drivers like are kind of crazy. They drive like very, very close together. Like I thought people here in the United States like rode each other's butts and stuff like that, but you people in the UK and Italy and stuff like that, you guys are like, even if you're going like 70, 80 miles an hour, you're still like, everyone's still driving like this close together so it was a little sketchy with some of the drivers just like how fast they drove and how close together that they drove but that may just be like a very common thing there and it's like no different to them like it's not it's not sketchy to them or anything like that so i'm not saying that every driver is like that but we definitely got quite a few that drove like fast and pretty close together next up i will talk about the food in london now honestly the food wasn't our favorite out of the whole trip um I would actually probably put it at the bottom out of all the cities that we visited, I think. Um, we still had good uh, dinners and stuff like that. They were just a little harder to find than like Italy, of course, that had amazing spots on every corner. Um, so the food I would probably give like mm, a six, 6.5 out of 10. We tried to do all of like the traditional types of meals that they do there. Um, we found a place that did an English breakfast that actually shockingly was pretty good. I was not expecting to like beans with my breakfast, but it was actually really good. They do these like very sweet beans with eggs, toast, and sausage, and I actually like really enjoyed it. I was like, they might be onto something with the beans for breakfast. I thought it was strange, but I actually really liked it. I think one night we did a, um, I think it was called like a steak and ale pie. It was kind of like a chicken pot pie, but with like steak instead. Oh, there was one night where we did find a ramen place that was actually really good. Um, we were recommended it. Um, I think it was called Shoryu Ramen. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, but um, that was really good. So the food wasn't necessarily bad. It just wasn't the best out of the trip. And of course it is a massive city with so many things to do, so there probably could have been even better places that we could have went to. But um, that was just our experience out of the four days that we were there. We did find some pretty good pastries, some pretty good sweets. I really did like those. So those were very good. Um, I did though like the coffee the best in London versus the other places I found that uh, Paris and down their co all of their coffees were pretty like plain and standard um, which is okay but um, London they just like gave you a bit of uh, variety with your coffee which is what we're kind of used to here in America we get where you can get a lot of options to make the coffee how you like it instead of like just an espresso or cappuccino um, so I did really enjoy um, getting coffee in London. So the shopping in London, I would give an absolute 10 out of 10 from uh, the gift shops to designer stores to um, just any sort of shopping that you can think of. They basically had it. We kind of saw London as like a mini New York, even though like I've never I've never been to New York, but it just kind of gave that vibe with just like um, how big the city was, the people, the um, just like all the things to do. Um, but London was a pretty clean city. So I have heard New York is a little dirty. So 
um, London may have New York like be in that uh, section. And lastly, the hospitality. This is just the experience that we had from the one uh, Airbnb that we stayed at. Um, I would give it like an eight out of 10. Of course, every people are gonna have different experiences at every different hotel and Airbnb. So this was just ours. I'll show a little bit of footage of our Airbnb. It wasn't exactly in like the center of London, but it was just like a tiny bit out. You could take the underground tube to get to and from it. So it wasn't too difficult to um, get into the city, um, but it definitely wasn't easy to like walk from the Airbnb to the center of the city. So we always, every morning either had to take like the tube or a bus or something like that to get to the sites we wanted to see. But we really liked the place. It wasn't too crazy expensive, I believe. Right now on Airbnb, I looked and lowest I've seen is like under 175 a night for it, which isn't too crazy considering the center of the city. There's places going like 300 plus a night or even more expensive. So I think we got a pretty good deal and we were there for a decent amount of nights. So we wanted, we didn't want to go crazy expensive um, with our place, but also try to find something nice. I'll also add the Airbnb listing in the description in case you guys want to check it out. Um, it was actually hosted by this very sweet lady. She um, lived in this flat and it was actually under, so it was like downstairs um, where she lives. Um, so we we just went like down these stairs and there was a little lockbox to get in. And yeah, it was super easy. And yeah, the flat is just, or the Airbnb is just right under her flat. Just keep in mind, I don't think they had air conditioning, so keep that in mind in case you do plan on going in the summer. London doesn't typically typically get crazy hot, but I would assume in the summer it's pretty warm because even when we were there in the middle of the, in the middle of the day, it would get pretty warm. Thankfully, in the evenings and mornings, it was nice and cool, so we did we it wasn't unbearable at all to be in that Airbnb. Anyways, let's go through our day by day itinerary that we did in London. So we got in around late afternoon, early evening on September 1st, and then we um, Airb we Ubered from the airport to the Airbnb, and that took a decent amount of time, maybe 45 minutes to an hour. So we were pretty, pretty wiped after a 10 hour flight and then an hour drive. Um, so we didn't really want to do anything that day except find dinner. So we just tried to find like the closest place to our Airbnb and we found this cute little Italian place um, around the corner. There was also a pub right next door that we did want to like see if they had food, but they just, and they were literally just drinking in there. So no food there. So we went to the Italian place um, and it was pretty good. It wasn't anything like super amazing, I would say. I don't even remember the name of the place. I'm not even sure if I got any photos or footage of that place because um, we were just so white and we just wanted to eat and go to bed. But yeah, after we ate dinner at that Italian place, we just strolled on back to our Airbnb. I think it was like a five minute walk or so. And we just showered and went to bed. The next morning we woke up bright and early September 2nd. And I believe we woke her up around 6.30 or 7. And the top of our list was, of course, to go see the Buckingham Palace. We took the underground tube to the park and then we walked through the park, which was very pretty. And it was a nice, chill morning. The weather was very nice. And um, we were able to wear like little jackets and pants. So uh, loved that. At the end of the park was the Buckingham Palace. I honestly didn't know what to expect when I saw the Buckingham Palace, but um, once we got there, it it is pretty like spectacular. Like it's pretty amazing the palaces that um, people can build, and it was just very surreal to see after seeing it on just um, TV all the time, um, and then to finally just like see it with your eyes. Um, I that I was thinking that um, through the whole trip, but. Yeah, really cool to see. There wasn't a ton of people there because we got there so early. We arrived there probably around 8 a.m. and it was just like the coolest thing. After the Buckingham Palace, we kind of just strolled around a little bit until we got to the 
uh, Westminster Chapel, which was very cool to see. I, we didn't do any sort of tour or anything like that. We kind of just wanted to see it. So we went and saw it, got some cool videos, really liked um, seeing that. And then of course it's pretty close to the Big Ben, so we just waltzed on down to the Big Ben. And that was like, that was like our main event. Like we really, really wanted to see Big Ben, of course, and it was so, so amazing to see. I actually did not realize that the Big Ben has like, the top of it is, a lot of it is gold. Um, like a gold, I don't know if it's actual gold or like a gold co color or whatever, but I um, always in pictures and videos, it always just seems like more of like a plain kind of color. But when I actually like saw it, I'm like, oh my gosh, the top is like very gold. It's pretty cool to see. So yeah, we really loved seeing the Big Ben. We saw it quite a few times while we were there because we did the we did do the double decker bus and it, it drove us by it a few times. So we got super cool footage of it and pictures and stuff like that. So yeah, really loved seeing the Big Ben. Jet plane headed up to the sky. Spread wings and that clouds getting high. We ain't a raven a while. So take me back to London. After that, Caitlin, my wife, really did want to see uh, Little Venice. It's just this little canal with a bunch of cute boats. Um, it was like a little bit out of the way, so we kind of just like Ubered over because it was nice, easy, and convenient. Um, there were no tubes going that direction or anything either, so um, we just moved on over, saw Little Venice. is really cool. All the boats are super cool. Loved getting all the photos and footage. So yeah, um, really liked Little Venice. If you're in that area, I suggest going and seeing that too. After Little Venice, we decided to finally get on the uh, double-decker bus. They have a, quite a few different companies that have different buses. Um, I believe ours was called like the City Sightseeing Bus, um, and we did a 48-hour ticket so we could uh, use it that day and the next day. And it is actually very convenient, and I do suggest doing it if you want to see if you don't have a ton of time and you want to see most of the city this bus will drive you around most of the main attractions so we are really happy that we did um, sign up for this bus and it's not crazy expensive either it takes you to a lot of locations and i don't remember how much it was but i remember it not being that expensive really at all the bus did take us by the London Eye, which was really cool to see. It's just this massive Ferris wheel that they have. You've probably seen it before. Um, so yeah, that was really cool to see. Of course, I did not, me or Caitlin did not want to get on that thing because it is massive and fear of heights, not gonna get on that thing. But from the ground, it was really cool to see. We did get off of the bus by the Tower Bridge area because we kind of just Wanted to stop, see that, walk across a bridge, get some cool photos and footage. And um, so the Tower Bridge was very cool to see. We do make our way around to it again once we get on the bus. So um, after taking some photos, we went down um, to the borough. Yeah, yeah it's called the Borough Market. But the Borough Market was insane. They, I, I never saw more people in the whole trip than this location. I don't know if it's because we were there during during just lunch hour or something like that, but it was it was shoulder to shoulder people. So if you're not into that kind of thing, maybe try to go like first thing when they open or maybe when they're about to close, like it may be less busy, but I believe we just went during a very busy time. So um, the borough market, if you don't know, it's just this massive, massive food market um, that serves all sorts of food, treats, sweets, stuff like that. Um, on TikTok, there is a very popular location where they do chocolate strawberries. I, we didn't get those, but I did get some video of that. I got some fish and chips because they're very, they had a very popular spot in that location. I really like fish and chips, so I got that. Um, my wife got this uh, sandwich from a place called Sons and Daughters Sandwiches. And I think the sandwich was like just okay. It wasn't anything amazing. It was just like a sandwich. But yeah, we just like sat down, had our lunch, and 
just enjoyed people watching and it was a pretty cool experience. So after the borough market, we got back on the double decker bus and it took us actually around and then across the tower bridge, which was super cool. Got some cool footage of that and really just enjoyed seeing, um, enjoy, enjoyed getting to go across this bridge that is very iconic and see in movies and TV shows like all the time. And then after we crossed that, we got off the bus because we had a tour of the Tower of London. This tower is pretty crazy and historical and we really enjoyed this tour, just seeing all of the uh, historical buildings and stuff inside of the towers I'll dive into. There was like a pretty intense room. I forgot what they called it, but it's where they like used to torture prisoners like way, way back in the day. So that was pretty intense. If you're looking for historical facts in this video, this really isn't the video for you because I'm not too much of a history buff. We really just kind of enjoyed like the sightseeing over the history. We did like still like some of the history, but um, just I don't have too much information, honestly, on like the um, history of any of these buildings. After that, I think we just chilled for a second, got a coffee and pastry just to rest our feet. And then we got back up and then I believe we did some shopping. We went to the Gymshark store, which I mentioned earlier, which was so cool to see, of course, and I got my shirt. And probably one of the coolest parts of the trip was we went to this place called Liberty, and it is just this massive, huge shopping place that has almost any sort of kind of gift that you can think of if you're looking to get gifts for someone's birthday or Christmas or something for yourself. This place was absolutely phenomenal and I would suggest anybody that loves shopping definitely go check this place out. I think they had like four different floors and I think one of the top floors was like an entire floor dedicated to Christmas, which is super cool. Um, me and my wife really love Christmas, so it was really cool to see that. So we did really um, enjoy this store. I think we picked up an ornament and like a few other things there. And after we were done shopping there, it was time for dinner and we walked on down to Soho. I don't believe it was too far. I think we either walked there or took public transport, um, walked around Soho to find somewhere to eat and we finally found this little pub called The Blue Posts, and we enjoy we really enjoyed our dinner there. Um, keep in mind, not all of the pubs serve food all the time. Like some of the pubs, they're like just dedicated to drinking. Um, so if you're looking for somewhere to eat, just make sure that the pub is serving food at that time because sometimes they dedicate certain hours to like just drinking which i mentioned the um previous night when we tried to go to a pub and it, it was just drinks no food so and we went to the italian place but this one did have food um i think it was called a steak and ale pie which is what i got and like i said it was like a chicken pot pie but it had like steak instead um, and then like mashed potatoes veggies that was a very good meal. I would give that maybe like eight, eight point five out of ten. And then my wife got this pretty good looking sandwich with fries. I'm not exactly remembering what the sandwich was, but I think she enjoyed that as well. And then we got these uh, ciders with our meal. Those were super delicious as well. Really liked those. Not huge beer drinkers. Um, my wife and I don't really like beer. Like at all so it is a little difficult being in london because they seem to really enjoy their beer um and don't focus too much on different kinds of drinks there you definitely can find different drinks there um but it just seems a little more difficult to find just because they love beer so much there so if you love beer this is the place to be after that we took the underground tube back home to our airbnb showered went to bed the next day we got breakfast at this place called buns from home they actually have a few different locations these were super delicious little cinnamon roll pastry things um, we really liked those keep in mind each location had like kind of something different that we realized so not all of them had the same exact things and we got a coffee at this place called trampoline across the street from buns from home and the coffee was just like it was okay it wasn't amazing 
Um, so yeah, that was our breakfast, and then we um, went down to Notting Hill, which was something my wife deeply wanted to do. It's just this super, super cute, amazing um, neighborhood. A lot of you probably already know about it, and they literally have a whole movie based around it called Notting Hill. I'm also just a girl standing in front of a boy asking him to love her. And it's just super, super cool. All of these little shops, uh, bookstores, um, things to eat, stuff like that. So we really, really enjoyed Notting Hill. I got this amazing donut at this place called Donut Time in Notting Hill. So I really liked that donut. If you're Notting Hill, I would suggest um, getting a donut there. So that was good. Caitlin got this cool little fun jacket at this jacket place that has all these different fun uh, jackets. I believe they're kind of TikTok famous. And then once we were done at Notting Hill, we went down to the Kensington Gardens to walk through there to get to the Kensington Palace because we did have a tour of that. This was really fun as well. Really enjoyed walking through the park and the gardens, the absolutely massive, super beautiful, loved this part. And then the um, palace was also really cool to see. Got to go inside through all the rooms, see um, just a bunch of like historical stuff, bunch of crowns and outfits and everything like that. Really, they really love their fashion there. So they had a lot of different things you've seen at like the Met Gala and stuff like that. So it was cool to see all that. And I don't know if you guys knew this, but they also do have a afternoon tea spot in the Kensington Gardens. So we chose to do this location. Caitlin really wanted to do afternoon tea while we were in London. So we chose this spot and it was actually really enjoyable. The little foods that they brought us were super good. The tea was really good. Just enjoyed every little bit of that. If you are looking for a spot for afternoon tea, I would highly recommend the Kensington Gardens. Okay, so my memory card ran out of storage, so I had to deal with that. So I believe we left off at the Kensington Gardens. Um, the afternoon tea that we had, of course, again, was absolutely amazing, and I would highly suggest going there if you were looking for a good place to have afternoon tea. So after afternoon tea, we went down to this really cool looking little pub called the Churchill Arms. It's a pretty popular one there because they're like the most like decorated pub out of them all they have so many different kinds of flowers and de and decorations and things like that so it was just a really cool place to get photos and stuff um we didn't really um stop in for a drink or anything because we weren't we didn't uh feel the need to at the time we really just kind of wanted to see it because it is a really awesome pub and after that, we did some more strolling in the Kensington Gardens because there is a spot in there that has a Peter Pan statue. And my wife, Caitlin, is a huge fan of Peter Pan. And it's like one of her most favorite childhood Disney movies. So we definitely had to go see that. And it was just like a really just sentimental thing to look at, take pictures of and see. If you really do like Peter Pan, you could definitely go to the Kensington Gardens and check out this statue. After that, we went down to Soho to walk around a little, check it out, and then get some dinner at this pub called the Lamb and Flag. Um, this place was pretty good. Um, it was a place where we could get a Sunday roast, and we actually didn't know that they like actually stop serving dinner at a certain time to then just serve drinks. Um, I believe we got there, we, we even got there like kind of early, like 6.45 ish and they were like oh you like got here just on time because we were just about to stop making dinner and we were like at 
645 okay so we're lucky that we were able to get some food and get some drinks and um so we got their sunday roast and caitlin's was definitely a lot better than mine i can't remember what uh meat she got on hers i think it was either like a steak or chicken and mine was the uh pork and i wasn't a huge fan of it um i think it was just like the texture of a pork of the of the pork um wasn't super amazing but everything else on the plate was uh, pretty good so um if you don't super love pork maybe don't get that one and try the um the different ones because the other ones were good and then i think we just got some moscow mules to drink and yeah was a really good was a really good place to uh, stop and get dinner after that we stopped by this donut place for dessert in soho it is a really cute little shop um a lot of like gourmet decorated donuts and treats and it, this place was super super good i i can't remember the name of the place um if i do happen to remember i'll put it on the screen here after that we took the underground two back to our airbnb and went to bed so the next morning we got up pretty early and we went to the probably the most famous little road crosswalk in the world uh, abbey road um if you don't know if you aren't a fan of the beatles it was on one of their albums one of their most popular ones and it was just really really awesome to see both caitlin and i are huge fans of the beatles and so this was a huge bucket list thing for us to do go to abbey road cross the street get our very famous photo and it was actually really hard to do because it actually is a pretty busy street and we got there pretty early i think we got there we got there around 9 a.m so not like crazy early but like still in the morning time and um there was a lot of cars going through the street um we weren't sure if it was going to be a busy area or not um so and there was also other people trying to get photos as well thankfully not um, a ton of tourists yet but um there were definitely still some already there so it wasn't super easy for us to get a photo or anything like that um we couldn't even get one with both of us really um so we we j were there for maybe a solid 30 minutes to an hour trying to get uh videos and photos of us crossing the street and they also had a gift shop called um abbey road just called abbey road shop where they all ha where they had all sorts of beatles merchandise and abbey road merchandise and music things like that so that was cool to see and then afterwards we went to a breakfast called the ivy and now they have numerous locations across London and I think they have a few locations in Scotland and Ireland um, and I think the Wales if I'm remembering right I looked on their website we went here for um, English breakfast which was another bucket list thing to do while we were in London and I'm glad that we did because it was actually so good um, mine came with like eggs like sausage bacon their beans of course toast and I can't fully remember what else. And I also got a coffee, which was delicious as well. Um, so yeah, I'm actually pretty shocked that I enjoyed the English breakfast. At, I'm, most Americans, I feel like, look at the beans on the English breakfast and they're like, oh, what did they do in putting beans in breakfast? But shockingly, pretty good so afterwards we went to this place called fortnum and mason it is a very very popular massive store in london and this was one of the coolest stores that we saw um pretty pretty closely compared to the liberty store that i described earlier almost the same thing um it's just this massive store is like maybe four or five stories with so many different things that you can get for gifts for souvenirs for yourself and yeah they had everything from teas to chocolates to coffees honeys jams alcohol just like so many things and even more things that i'm not even listing but you can see in the video too just how massive this store was this is if this place was in um america like if it was in the states i would definitely like go there for to get 
Christmas gifts and stuff like that because it kind of has every, anything for everyone there. If you were in London, definitely suggest Fortnum and Mason. That was like a 10 out of 10 experience. After that, we wanted to find a fun little cocktail bar. So we found this one called Mr. Fogg's Gin Parlor. It is in Covent Garden. And this place was super, super cool, super aesthetic, vibey, vintage, and they're just very popular for all the types of different gins that they had. That they said they had like 200 types or something like that, something insane. So very, very popular for their gin and tonic. So if you are a gin and tonic fan, you want to go to this place because this is like the spot for gin and tonics. Um, it was right above this pub, so you had to go like upstairs to it. But yeah, super, super enjoyed our drinks here. We each got a seconds because they were just so good. And then for dinner, we were suggested this place called Shoryu Ramen. I believe I mentioned it earlier in the video, but this is where we went for our last dinner in London. Um, we just wanted something a little different, so and we both really love ramen, so we went here and it was very good. I would probably rate it like an eight out of 10. I don't think it's the most amazing ramen I've had, but it was still very, very good. And if you are craving ramen, you should go to this place in London. And I think they have a few different locations across the city. So there's not just like one. So yeah, after that, I think we just went on back to our Airbnb. We were wiped and just went to bed because we had a long travel day the next day to Paris and that's pretty much where I will wrap up this video. I actually forgot to mention um, the weather. I was going to talk about that too um, because I think that's an important subject to talk about when you're considering traveling. Um, I feel like the summers could definitely get pretty hot in London probably not definitely not as hot as like Italy or other places like that um, but even in September um, we were pretty pretty warm in the afternoons thankfully though the mornings and the evenings were very chill so we were able to have on like a coat and pants um, but we weren't freezing um, it was just chilly in the and it was very refreshing coming from over a hundred degree weather in Arizona to that. Um, but because you are outside all day long and in the sun, even though it's not necessarily super hot there, you will definitely get sweaty in the mid afternoons um, because you're just in the sun all day and you're walking around. So, and it's still like relatively warm in the afternoons. I think warm is the best word I can think of for London's weather. So yeah, if you are wanting it to be definitely cooler when you go, I would suggest probably at least late September or later because um, we went in early September and we were fairly warm during the middle of the day. But yeah, other than that, that was our London uh, trip, four to five days-ish. It was the best part of our trip. We really loved London. If you were going to be close to London and you were thinking about not doing London, you should definitely do it because it was even better than we expected and we definitely didn't expect it to be the best part of our trip. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If there's anything I missed out or if you have any questions, just feel free to comment down below and I will answer them and hope you guys have a wonderful day.